living in the will of God. As Christians, we are saved to live in the will of God. We are not saved to live like the world who lives according to their own will, according to their feelings, according to their fancies. We are not called to live in that way. We are called to live in the will of God. A Christian living in the will of God will never have to seek to know what their purpose is. They will never have to seek provision from the Lord, right? They will never have to struggle to know the voice of God. Not those who are living in the will of God, okay? These things are given to us when we live in the will of God. The will of God is the place of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Every believer, no matter how long you've been saved, is spiritually and naturally equipped to live your life out in the will of God. Have you ever prayed about a decision that you needed to make and after praying and waiting a while, you still are unsure of God's will? Sometimes we can be faced with needing to make a hard decision, whether or not to marry a person or whether or not to get a surgery or to take a treatment that a doctor has recommended. Sometimes we can pray and we don't hear anything or, or we have no leading from the Lord. So when this happens, what do we do as believers? Do we wait and do nothing? Do we use our own wisdom to make the best decision that we can make? Do we take the silence of God as a no? That would not leave us in a place of peace. But what do we do? To know God's will, you have to seek God. We can know the will of God through scriptures, but when it comes to knowing his will concerning something personal or something more specific to your life, you have to seek God to know his will. Those things are not going to be laid out for you in the word of God. Here's a warning. Don't ignore the written word of God, and then seek God to know his personal will. God sees that person as a person who really does not want to live in his will. So it's important as believers that we yield and submit our hearts to the written word, to the written will of God that we know, and we seek him for that which we don't know. One thing, beloved, is that it is very human to want to have God on your own terms. Oh, yes. This is why there is even an open door to doctrines of demons. Oh, yes. This is what why there's even opportunity for false prophets. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because it is very human to want to know God on your own terms, to want to serve God on your own terms, according to your own will. But God has a will. The word will, okay, the Greek word is thelema. And so God has a thelema. It means what God has determined should be done. God has a will. The fulfilling of God's will is the greatest spiritual sign of your relationship to the Father through Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. It's not performing miracles. It's not being able to quote a lot of scripture. It's not perfect church attendance or having a title. It's fulfilling the will of God. That is the greatest evidence of your relationship to the Father. Because you cannot fulfill the will of God apart from him. Let me share a scripture with you, Amar. It says, whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. So see, doing the will of God, fulfilling his will for your life is the greatest evidence that you will ever have, beloved, 
of being in relationship with the father. So first I want to talk about what is it to seek God, okay? We don't seek God in the way that we would seek a lost friend, for example. God is not lost. So if I am seeking to find a person, I have to seek them where they are, right? So if a husband, for example, is an avid golfer, you might seek him on the golf course. If a wife is an avid shopper, you might seek her in the mall. You can only find the one you're seeking when you seek them where they are, right? So if you're looking for a bomber, you might seek them in the sanctuary of the Lord. Somebody say, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I prophesy. So, beloved, the truth is that you will find who you are seeking when you seek them in the place of their own affection. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But a lot of people. And yes, some believers seek God in the place of their own fancies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me, God says, when you seek me with all of your heart. So if you're seeking God with your hands, well, God isn't affectionate about your hands. If you're seeking God with your wallet, well, Jesus didn't die for wallets. When you seek God with your heart, he will be found by you. Why? Because he is affectionate about your heart. God has always been after the hearts of men. And so we can know the difference when we are seeking God. One time, beloved, I stopped attending a prayer meeting that I once attended because they weren't seeking God. They were seeking their own fancies. And there is a difference between seeking God and trying to get a prayer answered. It's not the same thing, okay? But when we are looking to do the will of God, we seek God. We're not just seeking to get a prayer answered, but we're seeking the will of God. When you're seeking the will of God, God answers your prayers. So when you seek God with your heart, your prayer is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is calling you to God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Holy Spirit is always, beloved, calling us to God to submit to his will, to bow to the will of God. Now, the way that he does this is through the promises of God. When there is a roadblock, we're driving down the street and suddenly there's a roadblock and somebody is waving us, come this way, come this way. In a sense, that is what the Holy Spirit is doing and guiding you to the throne of God. He guides us to the throne of God through Christ by way of the promises of God. God gave us his promises to quicken us in prayer and to encourage our hearts in prayer. When you're praying, you're seeking God, and you're uttering the promises of God. Your heart, beloved, is hearkening to his word. That is what is happening. It's being stirred by the call of God to believe and to trust in his promises. This is the way that we see God. The Holy Spirit is working to bring you to an expected end. It is here you will find your God in Christ. It is through his promises. Christ is the only way to God, right? So here he is hearing, okay, and bestowing his graces of favor upon you. You are finding God with strong affection, okay, and in earnestness and in sincerity of heart. Beloved, this is all done through the promises of God as oceaned, influenced by the Holy Spirit. So imagine you're looking in the woods, you're searching the woods for a lost child, and you're calling out, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Okay, you're calling out his name. Well, when you are seeking God, 
Your heart is calling him. And we do this by the way of his promises. Jeremiah, if within hearing distance, we will hear you calling his name and he will hearken to that. His ear is tuned to hear his name. Well, God's ear is tuned to his promises because thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet. Do you see this, beloved, as we are uttering the promises of God? Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, our hearts are seeking him. And thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet. Okay, we're seeing our way to him and a light to our path. So I'm finding my way to God by the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the light of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. So as the Holy Spirit is welling up and pushing forth God's promises you are finding God. The Bible says, blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all of their heart. Psalm 119 too. Our purpose for seeking God. There is only one reason to seek God in any situation. And that is to do his will. You don't seek God to get him to co-sign your fancies. Some people only want to hear what will flatter them. God's will, beloved, is never to flatter, but to bless. In John, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. These are the words of Christ. The stress here in this text is upon choosing. Choosing to do the will of God. Doing the will of God will be the outcome of your faith. But choosing to do his will, beloved, precedes that. Oh, yes, it goes before that. Choosing to do his will, okay? There are more people who want to know his will than those who want to do his will. We can be unsure if we are choosing to do the will of God. But God is never uncertain. He is never unsure of whether or not we are choosing to do his will. But the Lord's voice of comfort, if you choose to do my will, okay, that is a voice of comfort that the Lord gives to us. It's given to every single person in our ignorance, in our fear, in our doubt, okay? If you choose to do, those who choose to do God's will, will never fail to know what God's will is. So the human will, choosing to do the divine will of God is the condition of knowing God's will. So God's will, beloved, is good and perfect and just, and God will always show himself mighty where his will is being done. Mm -hmm. God will make his will to prosper. Yes, God will stand behind his will. It was the will of God to crush him and to put him to death, talking about Christ, and to make his life an offering for sin. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. This is what God does with his own will. He will make his will to prosper. And oh, how the will of God is prospering in the hands of Jesus. Yes, in the sacrifice that he has made for us. So God will make his will to prosper. The enemy, beloved, wants you to fear that God's designs are against you. And and there are believers that have been persuaded of that, okay? And so they don't seek the will of God. They fear what the will of God will be for them, okay? Because the enemy has persuaded them that God has designed his will against them. The enemy wants you to think that God is going to cause you some unnecessary suffering, that God is going to make your life miserable, that the will of God, okay, is going to be so unappealing and and cause so much suffering and it's going to make you so miserable, okay? This is what the enemy wants you to believe. And there are a lot of believers who believe that way. God is not going to give you the expectation of your fears. 
okay? He's not going to give you the expectation of your fancies. He's going to give you the expectation of your faith. There is nothing in God that wants to cause his child unnecessary, undue suffering. But here's the thing. You won't see the goodness of God until you first choose his will over your will. And then use your faith, okay, to do his will. That is when you will see the goodness of God. The goodness of God is most evident to us in the fulfilling of his will. Let's talk about doing the will of God. We never, beloved, have to do the will of God in our own strength, ever, ever. The will of God is always done by his power working through you. You will notice the abounding grace and mercies that God is bestowing upon you. You will notice the favor, okay, that God is bestowing on you. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, to, to make it sound like, you know, it's just easy because your flesh will suffer because the flesh wants nothing to do with the will of God. OK, the spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit that you would not do the things which you would. Right. So, yes, that that is going to happen where the flesh will resist the will of God. The, the flesh wants nothing to do with the will of God. But the will of God is always done by the power of God at work in us. In Ephesians 3, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us. So what is happening here? When you are praying under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you will notice that the, your desires become enlarged. They, they don't even make sense to the mind. Yeah, your mind can't even perceive it. Okay, when our mind is engaged, you know, our, our prayers are, are small, you know, they're limited, you know, we're, we're uh, praying, and, you know, within reason and, and that kind of thing. But no, when the Holy Spirit is leading us and seeking God, you will notice that your desires, they become enlarged. That the Holy Spirit is raising your expectations below. Unto him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above. He's raising your expectations, okay, to meet with God, to meet the expectations of God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay. He's bringing them up to that place of grace, which is a lofty place. But that is how we make our appeals under the influence of the Holy Spirit as we're seeking the will of God, okay? It's to the graces of God. That's where we're making our appeals, beloved. That's where we're making our petitions to the graces of God, to the mercies of God, to that lofty place. Hallelujah, Jesus. So what you will notice is that your prayer, as you're praying, is rising, beloved. It's rising. It's, it's increasing. It's expanding. It, it's rising like a songbird. And it, it, it kind of disappears beyond the clouds, right? It's so beyond what you're able to think and, and to, to hope for and to comprehend. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, this is our God. Hallelujah. This is the one we pray to. This is the one we serve. This is who we bow to. The will of our God. Hallelujah. And so your mind gets swept away by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you. Beloved, what is happening is that the love of Christ is being poured out in your heart and your mind cannot perceive such love and mercy and grace. Here's my advice, beloved. Go with him, okay? You cannot approach the throne on your own. Go with him. So what is happening in that place, beloved, is you're being transformed, right? You're being transformed to do the will of God. You've already chosen it. You've already chosen to do his will, okay? But now you're coming into that place where the will of God is revealed and you are transformed to do his will. You are changed. You are ready 
to do his will, okay? Your mind is changing, beloved. Your faith is soaring in that place. Yes, yes. And in the place of God's grace with which you stand, that's where the Bible says, in this grace in which we stand, you are doing the will of God. 